Right. Uh, this is my uh, vintage Stingray copy. It's you can see it's in pretty good condition with lights reflecting off it, but that's just the light, as I said. So it's no dings at all. There was one small one here on the back of the neck. I don't know if the camera will be able to pick it up or not. No, it can't really be. It's so small anyway. That's what I'm saying. Uh, it's strung recently with um, some slinkies, so, uh, quite a fine gauge. Um, it's just a very, very playable, really pretty accurate to the tone, I have to say, Stingray copy. I have been tempted before to put maybe a John East or something in it, um, just to really make it sing, but it, it's a very, very good gigable bass as it is at the moment, uh, which is very playable. Um, it's really good for slap, I have to say. Um, I think it's just generally on Stingray's eye is true because the position of the humbucker and you've got loads of finger space near the uh, neck joint and neck pocket. So it's just like. <laughs> So yeah, that's it really. It's it's just a really good budget bass. Um, get you the Wilkes and Hardware and stuff sets off quite nicely and puts it a cut above of the Stingray copies. And if you're looking at getting a Stingray, this is a good place to start.